can improve at any stage of chronic kidney disease, stage 5 included, says science. This is what a large cohort study proved. This research involved more than 400 people, stage 2 to 5, and lasted more than 8 years. 62 of them were able to improve even if they were in stage 4 or 5. The study was published in the journal PLOS ONE, a leading scientific publication. Now the interesting part. Researchers outlined all the aspects of what made an improvement in GFR numbers possible. And you can follow the same strategy that made this possible. Yes, they found the secret to reverse it. And now you may ask, Catherine, you always tell us that people can improve their GFR even in the advanced stages. What's new about this study? Well, beside the fact that they followed 400 patients for more than 8 years and proved that even those in stage 5 can improve their GFR, the most interesting thing about this study is that researchers isolated all the factors that made an improvement possible. By the way, GFR means glomerular filtration rate. It tells you exactly how much your precious filters are working. Yes, today we will look at this study and we will see exactly what matters the most in improving your GFR. They basically divided all the participants in the study in two groups. The 62 improvers that are those that did had an improvement and those that never did, the non-improvers. Scientists were then able to find out what made a difference between those that improved and those that didn't. This is incredibly interesting for us because many of the factors they found out to be key to improve are widely underestimated by today's practice. Let's take a look. GFR also improved in advanced stages. 24.2% of the improvers were in stage 4 and 5. Now guys, you know me, I won't bother you with numbers and statistics. All I care about is showing you what actually works. And I've examined this paper and I've extrapolated what really matters for you. Today, I will show you exactly how to translate science into practice. I want to show you exactly what to do to achieve an improvement. Question, what factors make a difference in reversing the decline of GFR? So this paper outlined five factors, five targets that once achieved will make an improvement in GFR possible. Please pay close attention to this part. Solving each one of these issues was shown to be the way to reverse the decline. Please pay close attention to this. You need to make sure you are in the green about each one of these. First, systolic and diastolic pressure. Okay, this count as two points, by the way. It's clear that managing this aspect is crucial. Second, proteinuria. Spoiler alert, this turned out to be the most important factor. More about this later in the video. Third, use of renin angiotensin system blocker. These include the very commonly used ARBs and ACE eyes. Now, this is a somehow controversial topic. We will see why in a moment. Fourth, also very important, the number of complications present. Anemia, hyperphosphatemia, metabolic acidosis, and hyperkalemia. Solving these complications really made a huge difference. Now, the last factor is the deficiency of one key nutrient. This nutrient alone was seen to be just as important as managing some of the worst issues linked to the decline in GFR. Okay, let's go a bit more in depth and see how you are supposed to achieve the targets outlined by this study. Remember that those that had an improvement in GFR, those that reversed the decline in renal function, were those that were able to put a green check mark on most of these points. Let's see how to do this. Not surprising, keeping your pressure in check was the first point on the list. Guys, I cannot stress how important it is to achieve a pressure below 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury. Make sure you are not over this limit. Now, in my videos, I usually focus on natural ways to achieve this very important target. Regular exercise, limiting sodium consumption, keeping the right way, and even certain natural supplements are all going to help. And there is a reason for that. 
The second target, taking a cyan arms. In this study, researchers were able to outline one of the conundrums most nephrologists are facing today the use of ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers. This research confirmed what I have already shown you in some of my previous videos. I read you what they wrote briefly. Improvers had lower systolic, diastolic, mean, and pulsed arterial BP than non-improvers. Moreover, improvers had high BP whether defined as above 140 over 90 or 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury, less often than non-improvers. Which means that, as I was saying, you need to keep your pressure below 130 over 80 if you want to improve. However, at the last visit, improvers used ACI or ARBs and diuretic loops significantly less often, as well as significantly fewer types of different antihypertensives than non improvers. Which means that those that improve are the participants who were able to keep their pressure in the right range naturally. And yes, this may seem strange at first, but it was confirmed by other studies too. So question, why is keeping your pressure low without ASI or ARBs key to improve GFR? ACE inhibitors or ASI are those ending in pril such as enalapril and lisinopril and more. ARBs are those ending in sartan, such as lusartan, valsartan, and many more. But they also come in brand names. I have a list now on screen you can see. So what is the issue with this? On one hand, these are supposed to protect your GFR by decreasing both your pressure and your proteinuria levels. So basically, they should be the best thing in the world for people in any stage of CRF. Or at least this is what we used to think. Today we know that real-world results do not confirm the theory that ACI and ARBs are your most helpful allies. Truth is, they may be doing just as much harm as good. Most recent research found out that instead of protecting your precious filters, ACI and ARBs are going to slowly damage your nephrons. Yeah, this is really a conundrum, but don't take this as a reason to suspend any of this if you are taking them. Always follow your nephrologist's advice, and if they gave you one of these, keep taking it. Because, as we have seen, keeping your pressure in check is something you absolutely need to do. This is why my advice usually is to find ways to reduce your dependency on ASI and ARBs through lifestyle changes gradually, to keep your pressure down naturally. How to do that? I'll explain what the best strategy to achieve these are in my video up here. Watch it now if you missed it. Now, the next point we need to focus on is uh, third target, proteinuria. Now, managing proteinuria is probably the most important factor in reversing the decline of GFR. Yes, this study basically confirmed what anyone following me already knew about this issue. Yes, proteinuria level will basically tell you if your GFR is going to improve or decline in the future. It is a predictor. And guys, while ARBs and ASI are supposed to lower your proteinuria, among other things, they are not as helpful as they are supposed to be. Luckily for us, there are other ways to decrease proteinuria naturally. Eating less protein, drinking more water, increasing your antioxidant intake, and taking certain supplements can make a huge difference in managing proteinuria. And now, if you want to know more about how to lower your proteinuria naturally and protect your precious nephrons, my video up here is for you. Now let's talk about the fourth target, the complications. Complications are, in short, all those issues that are caused by CRF and that are also known to make GFR decline faster. If you have any of these, you must take all the steps possible to take care of them. The complications underlined in this study are hyperphosphatemia or too high phosphorus levels. This can be dealt with by following a way of eating low in meat and dairy and with phosphate binders. And also, metabolic acidosis or too much acidity in the body. This is a common complication of the advanced stages. It can be dealt with by taking one supplement. And also, high potassium levels, another controversial issue. 
You see, for decades, high potassium levels were considered mainly caused by reduced GFR and by foods rich in potassium. Today, we know that is not the case. What actually causes hyperkalemia are conditions such as unmanaged diabetes, metabolic acidosis, but also taking herbs and ASI. Eating less potassium doesn't really help keeping potassium levels under control. And also, anemia. Anemia is what I consider probably one of the worst complications. It causes a lot of issues and also fatigue and there is no doubt that it makes GFR decline at a faster rate. It's also more complex to deal with and it must be approached by several angles. The way you eat, certain supplements and more. But don't worry, if you need more info about anemia, my video up here is for you. All the videos are also down in the description. And by the way, I've made videos for the other complications too. So if you need them, just ask in the comment section and I will give you a link. Now guys, we have seen until now some very important targets we need to achieve to stop and reverse the decline of GFR. To stop the damage. Managing pressure, the use of sartans, managing proteinuria and taking care of the complications. The large study we are looking at today says very clearly that if you can put a green check mark on each one of these targets, your chances of improving are going to be maximized despite the stage you are in. Being in stage 4 or 5 is not an issue as long as you can take care of these four targets. Before I show you the fifth target we need to aim at, which is overcoming a common nutrient deficiency, we need to talk about the elephant in the room. So according to the study, improvers had diabetes mellitus, DM in short, less often than non-improvers. So participants that had any form of DM had less chance of improving than those who didn't. Now, this doesn't mean that with DM, you cannot improve your GFR. Actually, of the 62 people that improved their GFR, 9 had diabetes. But it means that someone with DM is less likely to improve, unfortunately. Now, what many don't know about type 2 diabetes, the most common DM is that it can be reversed. And we can tell for sure that an improvement you can do to your sugar level is going to hugely help your GFR too. So how can you achieve that? Well, in my video up here, I've shown you one of the most important breakthroughs I've ever seen in the way of taking care of T2D. Okay, time now to see the last target we need to hit. And I want to say that what this study found really is something worth thinking about. They proved that achieving the targets I've shown you is way more important in reversing GFR decline than just the stage you are in, which means that even those in stage 4 and 5 can improve. And this goes in the opposite way of today's conventional thinking. So what really matters is achieving these targets, dealing with all the issues that stand in your way to a better renal health. In this period, the last target the study outlined is vitamin D. Be very careful with your levels for this nutrient. As very carefully outlined, the lower the levels of this nutrient are, the greater the chance of declining GFR. Now the problem here is that this is a very common deficiency. Even though supplementing it may be at risk for too low levels and for a faster decline in GFR. What to do to solve this issue? Watch my video about it here. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless.